This video is for the engineering principles class at the chemical engineering unit and we're going to be talking about um, spectrophotometer calibration. So the questions that you need to understand from this video are what is the purpose of calibrating the spectrophotometer, why are we doing this, and what are the steps that you need to perform to do this calibration. So here's a picture of what you have constructed that's your spectrophotometer. This was addressed um, and shown in an earlier video how to, how to make this. So basically what we have is a mint tin that holds a light and a sensor and we're going to power that light with a battery and we're going to use a multimeter to see what the, the um, photoresistor tells us is the, the resistance that will change based on the lights that it's seeing. So here's just the inside of what's inside the, the Altoids tin or the mint tin. Um, you wouldn't ever measure this way, but this is just a cutaway so that you can see what's, what's going on in the inside. And we see over here on the, the right, we have our LED that's our light source, and it's going to be shining light through a sample. And right here is a cuvette filled with algae and then shining into this photoresistor, which is our sensor, that's going to give us a resistance based on what the, the light is that it's seeing. So here's um, an example of what it looks like in the resistance reading that we get when the light is off. And you can see when we turn the light on that we have a different uh, resistance reading here. Now you would never want to measure like this. You want to measure with it inside the tin with the lid closed, eliminating all other sources of light except for the light that we're shining through the sample. So let's talk about what's going on here. So this is what happens when we're, we're taking a spectrophotometer reading. We'll put the sample in, close the lid, turn the light on, and um, just some fraction of that light is actually transmitted through the sample because the molecules that are in the sample or the particles that are in the sample are actually absorbing some of that light. So the fraction that's transmitted through, we have the um, intensity of the light that's incident, so the, the light coming in, and then an intensity coming out that's somewhat less. And we term that uh, fraction of intensity out over intensity in is called transmittance. Um, so here's our little light sample shining in. And then to figure out how much light is coming out, we hook that up to a photoresistor that changes resistance based on the light that it sees and uh, measure that with a volt. Uh, um, multimeter. Um, and then that measurement rating or that measurement is going to change based on the concentration of, of stuff, in this case algae, that we have in our, our sample. But we could use this with any, um, any molecule that's in a sample with different concentrations. So what we're doing here is we're shining light in and we're changing our concentration of our sample, which is what we care about but we're measuring resistance. So how on earth are we going to get concentration if we're measuring resistance? So what we need to do is have a calibration. Um, so we calibrate, relate the resistance to the uh, known set of concentrations. So here I have pictures, uh, uh, pictured a calibration set and this, uh, the numbers on top of each of these little cuvettes um, is the fraction of a full concentration. So your instructor will have grown algae for you know about two weeks to get it up to full strength, its maximum concentration, and then used that to create this calibration set with different dilutions. So for example, um, here you can see 1.0, that would be uh, full concentration, all the way down to 0.5, which is half concentration, all the way to zero, where there's no algae, this is just pure water. So we're going to use this because we know what the concentration is and um, we're going to create a calibration curve uh, with measurements of resistance. So just so that you uh, see the, the science relation, um, there's something called the Beer-Lambert law that relates transmittance, which we already talked about is the fraction of light that goes through a sample. Um, compared to the, the light intensity of light coming in. Uh, Beer-Lambert law relates the concentration of a sample um, to this transmittance. Um, so C is concentration and it's moles per liter. That's because it's the number of particles that um, 
de determine the, how much light is transmitted. It's also related to the length of the path that the light uh, flows through. And then this molar extinction coefficient, which is basically related to um, the specific molecule and how it's uh, absorbing the light. So let's talk about what a mole is. We use a mole because we care about the number of particles, but we don't want to really count the particles because there are too many to count. A mole is a measure of the number of things. Usually it's atoms or molecules or cells that we have. Um, here's an example of a mole of different substances, but basically it's Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd um, particles of that thing. So for example, here we see this is a mole of helium in the balloon. Here's a mole of water, a mole of uh, sugar um, or sucrose molecules, and a mole of salt molecules, a mole of copper, and a mole of aluminum. Now that doesn't sound like a much, and it doesn't look like a whole lot when we look at it in, in substances, and that's because we're counting um, molecules or atoms. But let's understand how big this number really is. Um, so for example, if we were to look at a map of Utah, a mole of rice particles would occupy a cube that's about 120 miles on an edge, and that would cover uh, about that much of, of the of area on the map. Um, so there's 120 miles on that edge. But also, if we were to have a mole of marbles, it would cover the entire surface of the Earth uh, to a depth of 50 miles. So um, the whole Earth would be covered to a depth of, of 50 miles if we had a mole of, of marbles. So it is a really, really big number. Um, okay, so how are we going to relate resistance to concentration? We're going to kind of skip over the, the whole um, Beer-Lambert law and directly relate resistance and concentration and create our calibration curve. So what we'll do is um, we have our calibration set and we'll take measurements for each of those cuvettes and we'll measure the resistance that the multimeter reads for the photoresistor. And right here I just have an example calibration set. We've done the, the, all of the measuring and these are our measurements in kilo-ohms. We can graph that in a program something like Excel and then we can use uh, a curve fitting method to fit an equation to that line. And the equation that we're going to fit is an exponential. Um, that's the, uh, the type of relationship that we see between a uh, fraction of algae concentration and resistance. So next we'll talk about the procedures for, for measuring uh, the um, resistance in each of your calibration cuvettes and then I'll show you how we enter this in and, and perform the, the curve fit. Okay, one thing that I've noticed is that the hinges have cracks that let outside light in. So, still going to need a little bit of tape to block those out. Just use some black electrical tape and cover them up. That'll make it so that no excess light goes in there. All right, so now let's uh, make sure everything's working good here. So you want to put it in your multimeter. Use these two, use the comm and the uh, milliamp. Leave the uh, bit of the 10 amp alone. We're going to turn it to 200 kilo ohms. Right now with nothing in there, we're measuring 39.5, that's kilo ohms. I'm going to open it up. Now I'm going to put in a cuvette with just plain water. We're going to see what that does. All right, so there we got 36.1. So that would be with no algae present in the water. So now let's see what happens if we have 10% algae. Kind of hard to see, but it's in there. And with 10% algae, it should go up higher because the light is getting absorbed. Now we're at 40.
Let's try 60%. Make sure it's clean. And the some cuvettes have ridges on them. And then clean sides, make sure the light is going through the clean side, not the ridged side. So ridges up. There's a little air bubble in there, so tilt the can so that the air bubble is at one side. So now we're all the way up to 77. All right. And that is all the algae that we had, and you know, 100%, we're all the way up at 138. Now, yours will probably be different than this. Everybody's is different, and that's why we calibrated to see what our specific uh, spectrophotometer reads. Everybody will have to know what their specific one reads for each of the different concentrations of algae. So that's why we go through the calibration process, measure every single one of these concentrations. So each day as you measure your algae, you can always, always come back and double check to see if yours is measuring the right consistency for what you have. So now you've done all of your measurements and we're now ready to do the curve fit for our calibration. So I have here a Excel file that either will be provided for you or you can make one of your own. Basically right here you can see I have a um, column that contains all of the fraction of maximum algae concentration. So just like our calibration set we have from zero meaning no algae to one that's the full concentration and all the fractions in between. So for each of those sets <clears throat> I'm going to enter in the data that I took, the, um, the resistance that was measured by my multimeter uh, when I put the, that sample in the, the spectrophotometer and I've already got those measurements and hopefully you do too and you've written them down. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in um, the measurements that I've taken and um, these are all in kilo ohms. You could do this in ohms as well, just as long as you're consistent throughout the whole process. So let's take a look at what we've done. So I've entered in the data, and the plot uh, right here is fraction of the mass algae, the maximum algae concentration with um, against the, the resistance. And so this is the curve that we get. The dots are the data, and the, um, the dotted line is the uh, curve fit. So what is a, the equation that we're fitting? we're using this equation here and it's an exponential equation where uh, resistance is equal to some constant a um, times the exponent exponential of uh, another constant b times the maximum or times the fraction algae concentration so um, we're using a least squares fit to fit this equation to the curve and it basically is optimizing this A and B to get a minimum difference between uh, minimum squared difference between the data point and the line. So let's just take a quick look under the hood to see what it is that we're doing. We're using a on this second tab you can see all the calculations these are just being pulled from the other spreadsheet and this is the these are the, the equations that we're using these will are pulled from um, a Wolfram site, their Math World site that um, shows the least squares fitting procedure. And these are the equations for um, calculating the constants. And uh, basically, all we're doing is calculating that and then um, using that to calculate uh, a predicted resistance based on a given mass fraction or a fraction of algae. So we take back here, this is what this R calc is. So here are our measurements, and then this is the calculated resistance that we would get if we're using this exponential equation with these least squares identified constants. So the next thing that you're going to do, now we have this calibrated, now we have an equation that we, are, that we know governs our spectrophotometer. The next thing that you're going to do, and you're going to take these measurements throughout the rest of your lab, is to come in and every
day that you um, come in and take a measurement, you're going to put your date here. So for example, let's say you know today or whatever day it is, maybe um, you're going to enter in your date and you're going to enter in some um, value for your uh, measurement. So I'm going to enter that in and it will calculate using the equation above here. This is uh, solving for x from that equation. It will calculate that fraction of algae concentration based on the resistance. So there are two procedures here. We have calibration and then we have measurements. So as you are taking samples from your photobioreactor to track your algae, algae growth, you enter in the dates here, and your measurements and it's going to predict for you using our equation that we identified through calibration um, to figure out what that fraction of the algae concentration is and like we showed in the video earlier you can actually take that cuvette <clears throat> that you pulled from your your <clears throat> algae that you're growing and compare it to the the calibration set to see you know if this makes sense does it make sense that this is a 0.13 fraction of algae concentration. So that's your procedure for calibration and then the next steps for figuring out your measurements of your algae concentration as the, the algae is growing in your reactor.